model I used is a spiral of development. So at the beginning, we were, like all of our animal uh, brothers, natural, integrated, whole, happy, peaceful, healthy. But unfortunately, um, without what we have today in modern society, uh, human beings had an average lifespan of about 30 years. You'd die of an infection or something else. And so because we didn't want to be, you know, um, happy and, and whole, but shivering in the rain in the trees, you know, we created houses and uh, industry, and we used our eye, frontal lobe, finger complex. Those three go together to change the world and to build what we see in society. Unfortunately, the price that was paid is devil's bargain. It's a split from nature into intellect. And it's been very, very successful in terms of being adaptive, in terms of um, increasing our lifespan. So now we live to be 80, but we're separate from nature. We're, we, we've broken from nature, and there's a hunger and a, and a lack of, of groundedness, a lack of stability. So do we come back down the spiral to primitivism? I believe not. Bin Laden and Kaczynski, the Unabomber, asked us to do that. But I think, no, we go forward. We power through our problems, around the curve, back around, to a position of neo-tribalism or neo-pastoralism, where we're back integrated with nature, but eyes open, Buddhist style this time. So we've matured, we've come up one level, but we've gotten back to our, our tribal roots and our animal nature. Until society changes in that wondrous way and we're neo-pastoralists again, this world is diametrically opposed to the natural world. So, um, you know, we struggle with that. I struggle with that, to be an American, to be a modern person, and yet to recognize that my roots and my health lie in my animal nature in my groundedness. Um, you know, so, so what do you do? You try to balance things. You try to compromise. Uh, yes, we all do that. Many of us do that, I should say. Some of us decide to leave. They get back to nature, like the hippies did in the 60s. They went to communes. It wasn't just because they were antisocial. They did it for this very reason. They wanted to be surrounded by a healthful, whole, grounded kind of an environment. Most of us can't afford to do that. Uh, both literally and, and emotionally. We've got family, we've got friends, we've got history, our definition of ourself. It's very hard to do that. Um, so, unfortunately, we're in the midst of the, the birth pains, the growth pains, and it's not easy for us. I don't think there's an easy solution for us as individuals living in urban or modern settings. I think we all have to balance our lives. Uh, it's difficult to imagine many Westerners going off and living in a cave and meditating for 10 years. Some do it, most don't. Over time, however, I think society as a whole will. This, this duality we have is really part of the problem. This idea of um, you know, modernity or, or, or tribalism, primitivism it's called, or you know, mind-body, or um, uh, matter and energy. You know, in, in physics, we know matter and energy really are the same thing. We know a particle and a wave are, are, can be called a wavicle, it's one thing. And so to me, this duality between spirituality and science, as good an example of any of this, of this duality, is spurious. Because, you know, for me, science, if you look at quantum mechanics and cosmology, those are counterintuitive sciences. Those are magical, spiritual sciences. They're science, but they have a non-Newtonian, non-linear nature to them that's in keeping with what we think of as spirituality. So science is spiritual. Spelt with a small s, though. I don't want to make it a big, super thing. And spirituality um, is natural, as natural as breathing. We're, we're going to the bathroom. It's a bodily function. It's organismic. And so, ultimately, if you make science sort of spiritual and you make spiritual spirituality natural, then what have you got? You've got one thing. You've got our organisms, which are built on, on something physical, but are in touch with, integrated with, the entire um, subtle substrate world. I think you can change uh, society uh, just like we can change ourselves. Maybe not completely, maybe not in an, a day and night, black and white kind of a way, but yes, over time. And I think so, efforts to change are important. But ultimately, I think change happens over generations, over time. And that, you know, I'm a long term optimist, and I think we all have to be short term pessimists right now, but I don't get depressed about my pessimism. It's motivating. 
to try to help things change.